Picture this. It's the early 16th century, and the Ming Dynasty is at its peak. The Forbidden City in Beijing is buzzing with activity, and the Zhangdi Emperor, also known as Zhou Huzhang, has just ascended to the throne. But here's the thing. The Emperor wasn't your typical ruler. Nope, he was anything but ordinary. So what made the Zhangdi Emperor stand out from the rest? Well, it all comes down to one word, eccentricity. Yep, buckle up folks, because this emperor's life was a wild ride filled with unexpected twists and turns. Before we dive in, please do subscribe for more Asian stories. Alright folks, let's kick things off by delving into the early life of our protagonist. The Zhangdi Emperor. Zhangdi wasn't your average kid on the block. Nope, he was born into royalty, the son of the esteemed Hongzhi Emperor during the flourishing Ming Dynasty. Growing up in the splendor of the Forbidden City, he had all the privileges that came with being a royal offspring. Now picture this, it's the year 1505 and young Zhangdi is just 14 years old when he's thrust into the limelight. That's right folks. He ascended to the throne and becomes the ruler of the Ming Dynasty, with all eyes on him as he takes on the mantle of the leadership. You might think that being groomed for royalty from a young age would prepare him for the responsibilities of rulership. After all, he received a thorough Confucian education, instilling in him the virtues of benevolence and wisdom. Expectations were high for the young emperor. Many hoped that his upbringing and education would shape him into a wise and compassionate ruler, steering the Ming Dynasty towards continued prosperity and stability. But as we'll soon discover, things didn't quite turn out as expected for our young emperor. The Forbidden City in Beijing, a place of grandeur and majesty. But behind closed doors, things were far from conventional. You see, our dear emperor had a bit of an obsession. The Zhangdi Emperor's harem was legendary and not in a good way. It was so vast that many of the women with it suffered from neglect and starvation due to lack of supplies. But wait, there's more. He loved building imperial zoos, but not for animals. Forget about lions and tigers. It was converted into what can only be described as a chamber for the amusement of women. Yep, he kept women in cages. Also, let's not forget about the Empress' extracurricular activities. When he wasn't busy entertaining his harem, he was gallivanting off on extended hunting trips, pursuing tigers and other exotic game. But it wasn't just about the thrill of the hunt. Oh no, our dear Emperor had a taste for the finer things in life. He spared no expense when it came to the lavish accommodations. Whether it was in the form of luxurious palaces or extravagant brothels. Stick with me as we uncover even more fascinating facets of his rule. Now let's delve into the realm of irresponsibility and unorthodox practices during the reign of the Zhangdi Emperor. First up on our list of reckless antics, a little incident involving gunpowder and a lantern festival. You see, our dear emperor thought it would be a brilliant idea to store gunpowder in the palace during the festivals. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, let's just say it ended in a fiery disaster that nearly burned down the Forbidden Palace. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. When he wasn't setting his palace on fire, the Zhangdi Emperor had a knack for shirking his political responsibilities. Court meetings? Nah, not his cup of tea. He much preferred a life of leisure and indulgence, leaving the nitty-gritty of governance to his ministers. And here's where things get really interesting. Our Emperor had a penchant for the dramatic. So much so that he decided to create a fake commercial district outside his palace. Why? Well, to simulate communal life, of course. But here's the kicker. He forced palace staff to participate, dressing them up as merchants and commoners. So let's talk about his military ventures. Our eccentric emperor with little to no military experience decided he's going to lead armies into battle. Crazy, right? But that's exactly what this young D emperor did. Despite his lack of competence, he was fascinated by military endeavors and couldn't resist the urge to play general. But hey, give the guy some credit. Every once in a while he stumbled upon a victory, 
whether it was fighting off raiding expeditions or suppressing revolts led by rival princes, the Zhangdi emperor wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Sure, his tactics were often questionable and the outcomes were sometimes less than ideal, but hey, at least he gave it a shot, right? Now here's where things get interesting. Despite his eccentricities and penchant for chaos, the Zhangdi emperor occasionally showed glimpses of competence in governance. Under his rule, China experienced economic growth and prosperity. Who would have thought, huh? And as for his legacy, well, let's just say the Zhangdi emperor left quite the mark on Chinese history. His reign may have been riddled with scandal and controversy, but it's hard to deny the impact he had on shaping the course of the Ming Dynasty and beyond. And there you have it folks, a look into the military ventures and legacy of the one and only Zheng Yi Emperor. Thanks for watching this episode of Asia Obscura. Please do subscribe if you like what you see.